What are alphabets? M. Scott Peck, a very famous author, um, wrote about coming to terms with something. And he would say, to come to the term is to come to the name. So when we're teenagers and we're struggling with our feeling and we're like, I don't know, I don't know how I feel. It's because we have not come to terms with our feelings. We do not have a name for our feelings. We, as humans, have not come to terms with alphabets. We don't have a proper name for them. Some countries have no name for their alphabets. Others just simply name the first few characters. Most European languages just name the first few characters. So we have alphabet in English, which is simply the Greek first two characters. We have abetse or abetsede or uh, alphabeto. And these are all variations of just naming a couple of the characters. It's not a name for the whole set, and it certainly doesn't tell us anything about it. Now, the Oxford English Dictionary would say, old alphabets are pictographic because they're pictures of things. Modern alphabets are symbolic. But it doesn't tell you what they're symbols of because they have people haven't come to terms with it. So, write down, so a lot of you will have seen some of the spelling stuff when I'm playing with words. Well, the words is the superficial level of stuff. That's the spelling aspect. When we get down to the character set itself, we're talking about character development. Okay? This is, this is serious now. What you'll find is that groups which share similar character sets are culturally similar. So, from this basic character set, there are maybe 15 distinct independent European languages. Yes, there is some crossover, but generally, unless there's been some education, a Dutch person and an English person don't understand each other, even though they're using the same core character set and the same core phonemes. That's astonishing, especially when you consider there is still cultural similarity. The cultural similarity stems from the character set and the arena of character development. This is why the Oriental languages, even though there are variations between Mandarin and Cantonese and Japanese and all the rest of it, there are cultural similarities because of the styling of character and its development. And this is the same for all styles of alphabets. And this is us getting right down into the nitty-gritty level of looking at character. So, I just want to give you a sense of um, some of the function of, uh, or the operation of character. So, because we're taught character in a masculine way, I'll explain that another time, we miss the whole picture. So, here's an example of some characters you may find familiar. So, look familiar? Okay, not perfect, but you get the idea. This is literally the ABCs of character. Okay. You may have looked at them differently now to how you've maybe looked at them before because of the way that I drew them. Characters are... In, in this character set are like oscilloscopes for the mind. They are wave patterns that render information about the journey of consciousness in form and space and time. I could go through the entire alphabet with you, upper and lower case, and decode each of them as to its function and its meaning. And the same, a similar method can be used for all living alphabets. 
But all I want you to look at for now at this very basic introductory level is how these are symbols and shapes first. Before we build them up, which is building is the Masonic aspect of language or the Freemasonic aspect of language, when we build these into spells which then refer to things or make people feel things or make things happen, astonishing power. That's why we call them letters, because they let, they facilitate, they allow. But I just want you to, you know, get back into that consciousness you had when you were learning these character sets, because at the roots and underlying this lie your raw mental awareness. And at the minute, your raw mental awareness is, is pinned and trapped into using a very limited character set to refer to massive, expansive experiences. We cannot abandon language like a lot of people want to when they have their knowing nod of spiritual awakening. Oh, I experienced that one mid two. Don't worry, we don't need words there. We don't need language there. We're all one. Rubbish. If we can't refer to and share our experience, then we will always be isolated islands. And this is where the entire New Age movement has failed because of a lack of shared terms. There's a hundred types of healing out there where everybody will agree they're talking about the same thing, but nobody will agree terms. And because nobody's actually struggling with their language to mould it and retransform it into referring to these really complex abstractions that we're experiencing or these subtle experiences. We can break free from that and from those limiting capacities of language, but not by abandoning language, because your rational cortex will still just sit there doing its thing. What we must do is transform and change our language, which must begin by, first of all, breaking down our mental framework from its big block parts, which are words and spells and meanings at the minute, which are meaningless meanings, really. So we're going to break all that lot down. So it's like if you imagine the house of your mind is made of bricks and mortar. And when people talk about freeing their mind, all they actually do is chuck more bricks and mortar in there. They just chuck more words in there. And all it does is make the house a bit bigger, but there's still walls and there's still a ceiling. When you start to break that down properly, systematically and methodically, you can recoup the bricks and the mortar to reuse, as you'll see me doing in some of my spelling work, but that's only the beginning. That's only the baby stuff. The real stuff comes when we get down to recouping character. Okay, to reclaiming the freedom of character. So this is when we get to this stage and we can start to look at re-establishing re the abstract meanings that we have imbued into our characters. And when we can recoup that through understanding, we reclaim raw mental awareness, which is a blank page. We get the blank page back to reuse our full mental capacity, which None of us even know what that even looks or feels like. We may have had tiny glimpses, but generally a lot of us are still trapped with this stuff. But then we've got that freely reusable for, to us to either reuse these or rebuild these in new ways or to find new symbols to refer to our internal experience, which is all characters and language is really for. Oh! Did anybody notice how this looks like the sea? And you'll find that with other characters as well, some of the meaning as to what they're about is because it's about the picture. They're still pictographic in a sense, but they're more like an oscilloscopic pictograph rather than a pictorial pictograph like you'll find in Oriental languages. I, was, I can't believe I almost went off there without mentioning the sea is like the sea.